Okay, welcome. So now what we're going to do is talk about transformations of functions. And what I'm going to do is just kind of look at some basic functions that we're going to do. We're going to start off with just a little warm up to kind of look at the different ways that we can transform a function. And then I'll talk about the notation uh, for transformations of functions, as well as what all those really kind of like parts of the transformations mean. And then we'll kind of investigate the um, basic functions that we are going to discuss. Now, these aren't all the functions functions, but uh, mostly in this course, this is what we are going to interact with. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, warm up. And the warm up is basically just saying um, evaluate for x equals 4 for each of these functions, and then graph the coordinate point uh, x, f of x on the graph and sketch the new function f of x. Now, this might be a little bit difficult if you don't know exactly what the transformations are going on. So therefore, I did provide a uh, graph. So therefore, we can kind of take a look and kind of cheat a little bit if we're not sure what each of these transformations is doing. And I'm just going to kind of do that, assuming that uh, maybe you don't know what the transformations are. That's why the kind of the purpose of this warm up. However, if you do know the transformations, uh, then you can go ahead and you know work through it and then just check your answers here with the graph. So. Let's uh, let's get on with it as far as um, looking at you know evaluating these functions and seeing what is uh, going on. So in this first example, we just have f of x equals square root of x. You can see actually I've already graphed that, so we don't really need to evaluate this. But you know let's just look at it again. If I want to evaluate for f of four, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. If I want to evaluate for f of four, that means I'm going to plug in four in for the x value. The square root of 4 then is just going to equal 2. So what I mean by that is by plotting the point, the point that we're now going to plug in here is going to be 4, comma 2. And let's make sure that's on the graph because that's what this graph is. So if I go over to 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 2, you can see that that point is on the curve, right? And that graph continues um, indefinitely, and there's an end point right there. Okay, very good. So the next one is now we have a 4 on the outside. And what we're basically looking at is, you know, what is this 4 on the outside going to do to our graph? Well, let's look at where this point is going to be. So if I plug in, you know, f of 4, stop it, do that. If I plug in f of 4, then I'm going to have 4 times the square root of 4. Well, again, remember the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 4 is going to equal 8. So now my coordinate point is 4, comma, 8. So if I go to 4, now I'm going to go up to 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's kind of see, you know, what happened to this graph. You can see now this point at 4 is not at 2. It's all the way up 8. So did the graph get stretched? Did it get moved? Like, what exactly is this 4 in front actually doing? So we're going to go and take a look at the graph and kind of see this on our own eyes, if I can type it. There we go. All right, and while it's warming up, I have one already set. So here was the graph that I transposed on there, you can see. And then this 4 over here, you can see, is brought it all the way up. And let's actually zoom out one more. No. There you go. Zoom in a little bit more. There you go. So you can see this point, 4, 8 is right there. So when they're multiplying by a 4 on the outside, all it did is what we call like a vertical stretch of the graph. So um, if I'm just going to kind of sketch this graph here, we can say it looks something. Ah, looks something like that. OK, and it's probably curved a little bit more. So let's do a different uh, color here for the next one. So now I'm multiplying by 4 on the inside. So I'm going to do um, f of 4. And that is going to equal the square root of 4 times 4. Well, the square root of 4 times 4 is, uh, I'm sorry, 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 4 is going to be, square root of 16, I'm sorry, is 4. So I go over to 4, and then I'm only up 4. So it looks like, again, um, it's shifting, you know, it's moving this point up, but it's not moving it as far up as we, as the previous example. So let me, let's go back to that point and let's go and see what happens here. And you can see, yes, it's still kind of doing a vertical, it looks like a vertical stretch again, um, but it's actually, we'll look at this, not actually the same thing as the vertical stretch, but you can see that that point at four comma four is indeed right there. So. That's the point, 4, comma 4. And that graph is going to look something like this. OK, 
Okay, again, but it's like a stretch and a compression, and that's something that's very important to understand. Um, I'm going to come back to D. It's a little bit more uh, advanced, but I wanted to add it in there. Let's look at what happens when we have a negative out in front. So if I evaluate for f of 4, I get a negative square root of 4. And square root of 4 is going to be 2, so therefore that equals negative 2. So my coordinate point that I'm going to plot is 4, comma, negative 2. So let's plot that point. So I go 4 and then negative 2. So now what do you think? Do you think the graph is going to like reflect on that way? You know, or what, um, what kind of shape will it look like? Well, let's go and take a look. And you can see this basically this graph takes our original function and just reflects it about the x-axis. So by multiplying by a negative on the outside, that is actually just reflecting the graph along the x-axis. So I'll try to do my best here. Sketch the graph. All right, so let's go and look at the next one, which would be f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. So therefore, I'll do f of 4 equals square root of 4 minus 2. Well, square root of 4 again is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So now my point is going to be, um, now my point is going to be 4 comma 0. So now I go over to 4, and I'm at 0. Hmm, so what exactly has happened here? So now I'm subtracting 2 on the outside, and it looks like then, is it like a straight line going from 0 to 0? Like, what's going on? And if you look at this, what actually happened is this red graph, let's kind of get rid of all this extra now. The original graph looks like it just got shifted down, and let's see how many units. One, two units. So the graph is actually just being shifted down units. So it's the original green graph, but just being shifted down two units. All right, and what about if we subtract? So when we're subtracting on the outside, that shifted it down. Now it looks like we're going to add inside of the radical. Let's see what exactly that's going to do. Let's pick a dark blue, maybe. Oh, let's do. Let's do a black. That's fine. Oh, brown. Brown's a good one. So if I evaluate this, I do f of uh, 4 equals the square root of 4 plus 5, which equals 9. All right. So, um, oops, I'm sorry. The square root of 9, which is going to equal 3. So now my coordinate point is 4, comma 3. So I go over to 4, and now I'm up 3. So should I have like moved it like up 1? Um, you know, what exactly is the adding inside the function going to do? And you can see, actually adding a number inside the function has actually moved. Oops, no, I want that one. There you go. Has actually moved the graph 5 units to the left. So I'm going to take this unit. I'm going to go 5 here. And I'll try to do my best here to graph it. That has moved the graph five units to the left. Um, so when we subtracted two, that moved it down two. I would assume then that shifting it up one is going to move the graph up one unit. So if I go ahead and evaluate for f of four here, that's going to be square root of four plus one. Square root of four is two. Two plus one is three. So now my coordinate point is four comma three, exact same point as over here. Um, but the plus 1 is, I'm going to assume that that is going to be just a shifting up 1. And let's go ahead and verify to make sure that that is exactly the case. Boom. Yes, all it did is adding outside of the radical just shifted the graph up 1. Now let's go back to this lovely example here I did here. Now, you see the add 5, that would be shifting the graph 5 units to the left. So you'd probably assume that this is going to be shifting it graph um, 8 units to the left. But the interesting thing is we have this negative inside of here. So um, that's actually going to apply something that's very similar when we had multiplying by a negative like over here. But obviously this multiplying by a negative is outside the radical. This multiplying negative is inside the radical. So let's go and see how that is going to uh, change everything that we're working on. Now I'll use black. All right, so we plug in f of 4. Let's just plug that in. f of 4 equals the square root of negative 4 plus 4, which equals uh, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so 0. So now my coordinate point that I'm graphing is 4 comma 0, again right there. All right, so how does this graph look? Does it just, did I just shift it four units to the right, right? I mean, what, how does that look? And then if a negative on the outside reflects it about the x-axis, what would a negative on the inside? Maybe reflect it about the y-axis? Well, let's just go and take a look. Um, I go and take a look at, there we go. 
And if we go and plug this in, we can see that multiplying by a negative on the inside actually reflects the graph about the y-axis. So um, therefore, it's being shifted over eight units to the right, but it's being shifted over. So did I make a mistake here? We'll see. I plugged in 4 plus 8. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. Why is this graph? Did I plug in the graph wrong? I'm not shifting it. Plus 8. Oh, I look at negative 4. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. I did my math wrong. <laughs> Nate, I forgot to plug in an 8 here. There we go. I was like, why is that not working? Good thing I'm using Desmos, right? Negative 4 plus 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Sorry about that. So this point is actually up there. So now you can see that the graph got shifted over 8 units, and it's actually going to the left. Okay. So this warm-up was designed to kind of help you understand the different transformations um, that we're going to encounter with our graphs. So let's go ahead and take a look at our function notation. And you can kind of see that some of these things uh, happen to the function. So if we have just a general function like f of x, um, you can see that we can multiply by a number on the outside of the function, which would be our a. We could add or subtract a number inside of the function, which would be our h. And we could add or subtract a number inside of our function, which would be a k. Now, in the next example, I showed there the same exact thing, but I added a b. And the reason why I did this separately is because b gives you a special case. If you kind of looked at this, um, it gets kind of confusing. Oh, stop. Okay. It gets kind of confusing looking at this, thinking that it's shifting the graph eight units to the left, but that negative. So whenever we have a b, there's kind of it's kind of like what I call like a special case um, in this example. And so that's why I kind of separated it into a different um, location. But we'll, we'll explain looking at that as far as a stop. We'll, uh, we'll investigate looking in that um, as far as our different um, as far as our different transformations and so on and so forth. So we'll get on to that in the uh, next video.